What's up guys, Joker here. Today I wanted to talk to you about the Logitech G502 Proteus Core as well as the Myonix Caster. Now I made it no uh, mistake that at the time when I reviewed the Myonix Caster some months ago when it had first came out that I fell in love with that mouse. Um, it's my daily driver still to this day. It's an, a fantastic mouse and I'm going to explain at the end of this video why, it's, why it still is my daily driver. But the G502 went, um, is really the the main mouse that came up in that review down in the comments when I had reviewed the caster. So many people in the comments uh, said, oh, you can't really call this the best gaming mouse without testing the G502 because that's really the big dog on the block. And it was the big dog on the block when the caster came out. So the G502 was already on the scene uh, and the caster came out, kind of stole a little bit of its limelight. Uh, we had a, all, pretty much every tech YouTuber out there saying this is the best mo best mouse under the sun, uh, including myself. So I wanted to get the G502 into test, and I luckily did get it in. Contacted Logitech. They sent one out uh, for me to try out, and I've been using it for the past couple months. So today I wanted to kind of bring you guys my experience with the G502, as well as my past experiences with the caster, and kind of line those all up and give you guys my final consensus on what I feel is maybe a maybe a better gaming mouse, at least for me, uh, and what maybe is going to be a better gaming mouse for you, because that's going to be different for everyone. With peripherals, mice, keyboards, things like that, there is always going to be a large chunk of it which is going to be subjective. There are many objective things that we can look at as far as the sensor performance, things like that, but there's going to be a lot of objective things, as uh, subjective things as well. So I'm going to try to present uh, both of those to you guys today. And hopefully by the end of the video, you guys can have a better idea of what is a better mouse going forward for you, uh, the Caster or the 502, but not necessarily, you know, the best gaming mouse ever. It's really about what's the best gaming mouse for you. So starting things off, looking at the specs on the G502 and the Caster, we have the price, which is pretty much a negligible difference of only $5. The Logitech is coming in at $65 and change, while the Caster is just at $70. So a very negligible difference there. I doubt that $5 difference is really going to make or break this decision for anyone out there. If it is, you know, okay. Uh, but I, I don't really see that $5 being a, a deciding factor uh, for many people out there. It's probably going to come down to many of the other things we're going to look at today, like the sensor. Uh, on the Myonix Caster, which I had talked about in my review, it does use the Pixart 3310, which is really one of the best sensors out there. It's a redesign of another sensor, while the Logitech uh, Logitech G502 is using the Pixar 3366, which is a new sensor which was designed from the ground up, uh, meant to be complete improvements on everything in the 3310, uh, at least on paper. Then I have to tell you from using them both side by side, I really can't notice anything. Uh, there wasn't really anything perceptive for me to tell you, you know, straight up and down like, oh yeah, this sensor is, you know, hands down better than the other one, no questions asked. Um, the, the differences between the two are probably really splitting hairs and it's getting down to the point um, where the or a human probably couldn't even tell uh, that much of a difference. At least I know that I couldn't. So th that's that's that as far as the sensors are concerned. Uh, as far as the switches on the mouse, the Myonic Caster on its left and right mice clicks are using Omron switches, which are rated for 20 million clicks. While the middle mouse is a TTC switch, which I actually used recently in my Gambius keyboard review. So interesting to see that showing up here in the middle mouse on the Myonix caster. While the Logitech G502 is said to be using Omron Omron like switches and what that means is that they are using switches which may or may not be Omron they are rated for 20 million clicks like Omron switches so you can be um, you know you be be feel relatively comforted uh, by that fact but they may or may not be Omron switches in the mouse that you get which is understandable uh, sometimes there can be issues with um, sourcing out um, the materials, but at least they're sticking with that high quality standard and looking for uh, alternative supply sources which are going to meet um, that standard that Omron has, has been giving them with the 20 million click life cycle on Omron switches in the past. Both of these mice do use a braided cable, but I will say that the Logitech G502 had a much thicker braided cable, and this is something that I did find actually impacted my experience using the mouse. I found the G502 had a little bit more drag when I was trying to move it around and just getting more fluid movements. I felt I was getting on the caster, uh, and part of that was due to that thinner cable. It felt it was a lot easier to move it around on the desk and not have it getting caught on things and just, just dragging along the desk in general as well, I felt was more of an issue with the G502 versus the caster. Both of these mice are also using a soft coat finish. The caster is really using it 
all over the mask while the G502 do, does have parts where it does have a glossy finish showing through. And I will say that those parts that has uh, the sort of glossy reflective finish uh, does have that really plasticky feel and it feels kind of cheap in those areas where it does kind of show through. I wish they had kind of just gone with the soft coat all around the mouse. Um, th the parts where it's just sort of accentuating lines and accents on the palm, I'm okay with, but the parts on the underside and the sides of the mouse um, where there are just large chunks of that reflective plastic uh, just doesn't look like very high quality to me, nor does it feel like high quality in the hands. Uh, so as far as the, the design, the materials on the mouse are concerned, I would have to give that uh, to the Myonix caster personally. Both of these mice also do utilize a rubber grip for where your thumb rests on the mouse. There's definitely a much more accentuated uh, thumb rest on the G502 without a doubt. It sticks out all the way to the side with that blue accent which can actually be taken away if you wanted to. When You could take that off for when you're doing the adjustable weights but if you wanted to you could totally leave that off if you wanted to get rid of the blue accent. That's actually something that I've chosen to do in my day-to-day -day use of the mouse at my test setup. Now I know we're really getting into detail when we're talking about things like uh, mouse scroll wheels, but I really can't do this video without talking about how amazing the scroll wheel is on the G502. It's very similar to the one that I had talked about back in my MX Master review. It has a switch on it which allows you to go from a standard sort of like clicky scroll uh, to a completely free flowing scroll so you can just have that scroll wheel just flying down. Uh, for scrolling through something like Twitter or Reddit or Fortune, I mean this is just going to get you to the bottom of the page instantly, no questions asked. And having that switch there is so nice and I wish I would see this on more mice. I, I don't know if Logitech has a patent on it, but if they don't, then they definitely should because this is something I would like to see on pretty much every mouse out there. Uh, I mentioned how much I liked it back on the MX Master and I love seeing it here uh, in a gaming peripheral like the G502 and it also has an amazing feel as well, being that it is like solid metal. It's like a steel mouse wheel. I mean, you know you're you're gripping something when you grab a hold of this mouse wheel, you know what I'm saying? Um, the, the cast just has, you know, a basic rubberized mouse wheel. It does the job. Uh, it's got that standard clicky feel. It, you know, has a fairly light touch for clicking uh, in games and things like that. I will actually say that the G502 maybe, maybe loses in that area as far as how heavy the click is, because I will say in games, I would like a lighter click as far as actually clicking the mouse in, but actually using the mouse wheel and the way that the mouse feels like at the desktop and scrolling and things like that, I will say that the G502 is a lot more satisfying to use in those particular scenarios, but when it came to straight gaming, I guess I'd have to say that the lighter click on the caster would win out for me in just a straight up gaming uh, showdown. The G502 does take up a slightly larger footprint on your desk when compared side by side with the caster and but both of these mice are are good for all styles of grip so whether you're running a claw grip palm grip fingertip grip uh, you should be good using either one of these mice even though the caster does have that smaller footprint I would have thought that maybe something like a claw grip could would not be as welcome on a much smaller mouse like the caster but as I mentioned back when I did my review of that mouse it was actually quite good on there as well and that is continued over on the G502 they have quite a light press all the way at the front of the mouse as well at the back of the left and right mouse click button so that's going to serve well um, depending on where you put your fingers whether you're a full palm grip or if you're claw grip uh, you could be assured that you're going to have a relatively uh, even press whether you're at the front or the rear of the left and right clicks on the mouse. In terms of sheer number of buttons, uh, without a doubt, I mean, the, the G502 wins, it has 11 buttons, ah, 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 many, many buttons on this mouse, and that's really going to help you in gaming situations, unless you have to click out to go to uh, your desktop to be able to customize, um, you know, your, your settings, then that's the better that you'll be able to just do that right on the fly in games with things like uh, DPI switching, you can do DPI switching on the caster, but they just have the single toggle switch right behind the scroll wheel. You have a lot more control as far as the DPI is concerned on the G502. Uh, in, in exchange for being able to also set multiple profiles and switch between those on the fly uh, using buttons, you also have a DPI shift mode. So if you wanted to set a lower DPI, if you were in a game and doing something like sniping, you can instantly hold that button, it'll drop down your DPI uh, so that you can get off your shot, you let go of the button, and then you're back at full speed. It's a really nice feature. I've seen it on a few mice in the past, uh, but this is just a really good implementation of it here on the G502, and I like the 
positioning of it as well, I find that it's actually useful. Where I've seen it on some mice in the past, it's actually been kind of out of the way. So I do like the DPI shift button here on the G502. Absolutely fantastic. And also edging out the caster is the uh, their DPI switch buttons where they actually have up and down buttons versus the one toggle button. Uh, and being able to set it up to five different DPIs in the software that they have included with the G502 and also have those DPI settings represented on the actual mouse itself is amazing. I wish the caster had this. This is one of the um, one of the best things on the G502 for me personally is being being able to get that LED indicator, which tells me exactly which of my custom DPI steps I am currently at. And as long as you've set your DPI steps custom and you know what they are, then you can tell by the LED indicator on the side of the mouse exactly which step you are at. This is something that the caster is definitely missing. It has nothing like this on it whatsoever, nothing even uh, to indicate within Windows what DPI setting you're at. You really just have to know by feel what DPI setting you are at with the Myonix caster. The G502, that is not the case. Uh, they win in that category, just hands down. Speaking of that software, the Logitech G502 also has a lot more customization you can do in there. Uh, talking again about DPI, the caster, you can only do three different steps while the G502, uh, you can do five steps, which go all the way up to 12,000 uh, on the G502. So you can really get it quite up there if you do uh, just want a super sensitive mouse. Further customizations in here on the G502 include a uh, surface tuning tool while the caster has a surface analyzer tool. Uh, the one with the caster, basically what you do is you hit a button, you move your mouse around, mouse around on the pad, and it analyzes it and tells you about how accurate your surface is. While the G502 software will actually tune your mouse's sensor, uh, at least that's what the software will have us believe, is actually tuning the sensor to work better with the mouse pad that you are using. So depending on the different material you may be using, the software could actually help you tune your sensor better to that mouse pad. That's a very nice feature to see, um, you know, whether it actually works in practice or not is a completely different matter. I couldn't really notice any difference if I'm being honest. I did feel that the Myonix caster had a much smoother movement compared to the G502. I had mentioned that there was some drag created by the thicker cable on the G502, but I also felt like the bottom surface on the caster uh, was a little bit better as well. I think that maybe is because it had the Teflon the Teflon surface covering a, lo a lot more surface area on the bottom of the mouse, uh, but either way, at the end of the day, I felt it was much smoother dragging the caster across my desk versus the G502, and at the end of the day, that's really one of those major factors that edges it out for me personally, because those are the types of things that I am going to notice more and more um, versus maybe some other things, like maybe if you just wanted something customizable, then the G502 might be better for you. Um, but when it came to that really smooth mouse movement and the comfort in the hand, I felt that the G502 uh, um, was getting edged out by the caster. But that's really what it comes down to at the end of the day for me is comfort versus uh, customization. You know, if you're the type of person that wants more customization, if you want to be able to get in there and tinker and change a lot more options, uh, you know, for gaming, then the G502 is probably uh, going to be the better mouse for you. Uh, but for me, I personally just like the simpler design of the Myonix Caster. I don't want that um, really uh, sort of, you know, really out there gamer aesthetic of the G502, which it definitely has. It has that gamery uh, sort of look, while the, the Myonix Caster uh, is a little bit more professional looking to me, a little more understated, uh, and I also think it has a better build quality on the Myonix Caster, if I'm being perfectly honest. I think it's uh, built a little bit better than the G502. I mentioned some of those areas on the 502 where I thought maybe they had cut corners that felt like a little bit cheaper materials uh, than I would have liked to have seen. But there's no doubt that both of these mice are fantastic entries from Myonix and Logitech going here into 2016, starting out the year. Uh, we have two really good entries. These are probably two of the best gaming mice out there. I know a lot of people also have mentioned things like the Zoe FK1 and the FK2 is a very is a strong contender out there. Personally, for me, I'm not a big fan of it because it's an ambidextrous mouse. Both of these being uh, righty mouse are you know more tuned to me. I want that uh, that strong righty feeling since it's going to be more tuned 
uh, to my grip personally, and I don't need the buttons on the other side uh, interacting or getting in the way for me. So that's why I look for a righty mouse as opposed to an ambidextrous mouse, like on something like the Zoe FK2. Um, but the G502 and Caster are both fantastic uh, mice, you know, great entries. Uh, my daily driver is still the Caster at my main rig, but I'm using the G502 at my test rig and I could easily switch between both of these mice uh, without issue whatsoever because they're both excellent mice. It really just comes down to at the end of the day, do you want that more cut, do you want more customization that you're going to get with the G502 or is it more important to you to have a maybe better build design and the more simpler aesthetic of the Myonix caster, which for me personally is more important than having those tunable options on the G502. But I'm gonna go ahead and get on out of here. Please let me know uh, where your allegiances lie down below. Are you on Team G502 or are you on Team Caster? Or maybe you're using something else. Maybe you're running a Zoe or something else completely different. Steel Series, I don't know. A Razor even, oh no, not a Razor. But I'm gonna go ahead and get on out of here, guys. I will catch you next time. Ta-ra.